Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial in our 24 days of Swift tutorial series this year. Today I'm going to present to you something very special for this channel because it is um, a little less practical, it is a little more theoretical. Because this week is the Computer Science Education Week and I'd like to talk about how we can actually solve problems as a developer. If you're an experienced developer, you are doing all of that what you're going to hear right now, um, even if you're not naming the exact concept that you are using. But if you're new to software development or if you're a kid and you're learning how to write software using Swift Playgrounds or if you're just entering this world of computer science, then this might be interesting for you. Also, if you are a developer who'd like to know more about the concepts that you can use to actually solve problems. And just a quick reminder, I have created a Slack workspace for the community of this channel where you can ask questions about Swift development and so on and the community already works so great that I just wanted to point you to it and you can help each other out there. I also can help you from time to time. You will find a link to join this Slack workspace in the video description below and it's of course completely free. But now, let's enter this interesting field of actually solving problems in computer science or in software development. And I have a little experiment for you, which is an assignment actually for your head. So please try to add all numbers between 1 and 200 in the next 30 seconds. If you want to uh, have some fun, please do it and pause the video and come back in 30 seconds. And if you did it, then just write the solution down below in the comments uh, before actually looking at the solution of this, um, of this assignment. And now if you have returned back from all this math, um, then it is interesting that many of you might not have solved this problem in the given time of 30 seconds because it's just, it seems undoable. It's such a large problem, such a huge problem to solve. But we as computer scientists or as developers, we can do a lot of stuff to make this a lot easier. For example, we can try to find a pattern and congratulations if you have found a pattern here. So this is the assignment that we had to solve at the moment. We want to add all the numbers between 1 and 200. And this is really a huge problem. But what we can do to simplify it is to see a pattern. And if you start looking at that for a while, then you might notice that if you add 1 and 200, then you, uh, you get the solution of 201. And if you uh, do the same thing with 2 and 199, so 2 plus 199 is also 201, and 3 plus 198 is also 201. This is an interesting pattern, isn't it? So what we can do now is actually perform a very simple calculation, which is just 100 times 201. And this is something that you can do in 30 seconds or even less. So the solution to this problem is 20,100 and we can get to that by seeing a pattern and then formulating a solution that is maybe a lot easier. So we did now something that is called pattern matching in computer science. And these four concepts that you see here at the moment, decomposition, pattern matching, abstra abstraction, and algorithms, are things that we as developers perform or that we use every day. So we did pattern matching now to solve a mathematical problem, but this is something that we could actually apply to any problem in software development as you're going to see in a second. So having a look at these four concepts, the decomposition, pattern matching, abstraction, algorithms, let's solve a real problem that you might all already have seen in this 24 days of Swift tutorials series. Uh, the first app that we wrote in this series was an application to actually recognize numbers that you've drawn on a canvas in an application. And let's say we really have the assignment or the goal to create an app that recognizes numbers. And you haven't done that before, but you'd like to. 
And the problem is, it seems, again, very huge uh, compared, it's, it's just as the assignment of adding all the numbers between 1 and 200 in 30 seconds. So what we do now is we can take this huge problem and perform decomposition. So we are dividing this huge problem into smaller problems, which could be we need a space to draw. Okay, this is maybe also a little bit difficult if you have never done it before, but it's doable. And another thing is that we'd like to do is actually take a picture of the drawing because we might we somehow need to use this drawing to actually process it and get a real number or an integer value from our drawing. The next step could be that we want to take this picture and actually recognize the number in this picture. And the third, uh, the fourth step, of course, is the easiest one, which is displaying the result. And we're now assuming that you are already a little bit experienced in Swift, so you do not have to uh, learn about what a variable is or um, how to actually display a value in, 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 in a label or how to press a button or something like that. So we are going to have the image of a developer in our head who actually wants to solve exactly this problem. So now we have these four smaller problems now that we can uh, that we can tackle and if we now start to tackle this smaller problem then we could maybe start visiting google and actually asking about the a very small problem here in that case is um, how to draw a line in swift and if we hit search then we might find a stack overflow answer already that points us in the correct uh, in the correct direction so now we already know how to actually draw a line and from that we can now abstract and think how can we use this concept to not just draw a line but also how to draw a letter or how to draw a number which is not far from what we have right here so you have to put some thought into that of course because not every answer is completely answered already on Stack Overflow but I think you get the concept now you search for a smaller solution that you can then abstract to getting exactly exactly the solution that you want. And now we have already thought about how to actually draw something, we have a space to draw, then we might think about how we can take a picture of the drawing. Again, this could be something that you look up in the documentation or against Stack Overflow. And now we have the next huge problem, which is recognizing a number. So let's have a look at, for example, this handwritten nine. And the difficulty of visual pattern recognition becomes apparent if you attempt to write a algorithm or computer program to recognize digits like this one. So what seems easy when we do it ourselves suddenly really becomes extremely difficult. Simple intuitions about how we recognize shapes like this. It, the nine has a loop at the top and a vertical stroke in the bottom right. This turns out to be not so simple to express algorithmically. So when you try to make such rules precise, you quickly get lots of morass of exceptions and caveats and special cases, and it, it really seems hopeless. But thankfully, this is a problem that has already been solved for us. So when we are researching a little bit, and even if you do not know about machine learning that we need to apply here um, to actually recognize digits, and we do some research, then we can come up with an easy solution to that problem, which is using uh, CoreML, a machine learning um, that is provided now with iOS 11 in the Apple ecosystem. And we just have to use the machine learning model and put that into our project, and we get the code that we need to actually come up with the solution ourselves. So again, this is now a very, very small problem that we have to tackle. And after breaking all of these steps up, there is only one thing left to do, which is displaying the results and actually um, writing all the code or the algorithms that do this work that we have outlined at the moment. So it is very important to not give up and despair if you have to solve a huge problem. Think all the time about these four concepts. Think about how you can decompose your huge problem in smaller problems that you actually can solve. Maybe have a look at your problem and see if you can start looking at patterns that will help you actually tackle this problem easier. And if you have found solutions, then try to find an abstraction for 
um, for your own problem or try to do something that you can use even in the future and uh, that is going to help you solve other problems. And at the end, write your algorithms that indeed do solve your problem um, that you want to solve and create a cool app like this one. I know this has been a brief overview about how to actually solve problems as a developer and we could go into more depth on that. If you'd like to see more of such conceptual or theoretical videos, let me know it in the comments down below. If you liked it so far, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.